Why did you ask me to meet you here, Sir Gunt? It's so public. Time is of the essence, Farina. Thanks to you, the Federation gets closer to the Tetrahedron's secrets. Sirach grows impatient. A minor setback. How have you explained to him the loss of both the Baku Tetrahedron and his precious telepathic mole within Starfleet? I explained it by finding the location of Starfleet's new secret Ray research facility. And you can lose the hood, my dear. My mental abilities obscure our appearance and speech to anyone who's observing. No one recognizes us? No one. So, where is the research facility? That remains my secret, Mr. Rock himself. Starfleet security officers. I'm sure they recognize me. My dear, don't you know that the best place to hide is right out in the open? Where have you dragged me? We're deep inside DS-12's automated maintenance area. The station's crew calls it the janitor's closet. And we're here because... I'm doing some detective work for the captain. And I need your help. It looks like a low-power deflector field. That's what it looks like. But isn't it odd to have one this deep inside the station? Deflector fields like this are used in maintenance areas as a backup safety feature. Maybe. But it also provides an effective screen for sensor scans. Aren't you being a little paranoid? I'm being skeptical. I think you like playing detective. Would you just help me find that sensor screen? You're never going to penetrate it with this. We need to jam the field. That's what you're here for. Shouldn't we check with station ops? I don't think the captain wants to draw that kind of unnecessary attention. Leffler to Aster. Aster here. Lieutenant, I need you to run a sensor sweep of the area adjacent to our coordinates. Aye, Commander. I just get deflector interference. Are you in the janitor's closet, Commander? Laugh it up, Lieutenant. Does the deflector read as a standard safety backup? It looks like it does. You don't sound convinced, Corey. It looks like a simple deflector field. Almost too simple. Compared to the others on the station, its harmonics are absolutely perfect. No fluctuations in its cycles whatsoever. Do you have a theory, Aster? If I were paranoid, I think it were a sophisticated attempt to hide something. Can you jam it, Corey? I think so. Are you sure you want to do this? Captain's orders. Mr. Astor, jam the field. So much for hiding in the closet.
Cardassian judicial ministry revealed that disgraced former Glenn Petros escaped last night from a medium security prison on one of the moons of Cardassia Prime. Petros was found guilty of murder two years ago in a conspiracy to use illegal proto-matter technology. She killed a member of her forensics team sent to examine a mass gravesite of Bajorans when he helped Starfleet uncover her plot. Cardassian and Federation authorities believe she received outside assistance to make her escape. Revan, you don't think she'll come after you, do you? Logically, this should be the last place she would go. Exacting revenge on Lieutenant Rowe is too obvious a motivation for her escape. You don't get Cardassians, do you? I heard McCabe got called to the principal's office. Principal's office? Never mind. Why do you assume that I'm incapable of appreciating your sense of humor? Because you're a Vulcan. I've studied humor, Andrew, from its lowest form, the pun, to what are considered its more sophisticated types. Satire, irony... Okay. Okay. From now on, I'll explain my jokes out loud. They just won't be as funny. Humor depends on a telepathic exchange, then. No. No! <laughs> What's so funny? She's leading you on, Andy. You just made a joke? Perhaps I should explain it to you out loud. <laughs> Have a seat, Lieutenant. As you can imagine, Starfleet Command is not pleased with your unauthorized investigation. You've compromised the security of the research facility, just as we've made a breakthrough with the Tetrahedron on Baku. While I do not approve of the Captain's actions, Mr. Martinez, this could have been avoided if Starfleet Command had been more forthright about your activities. I must confess, I've grown uncomfortable with this parallel investigation. I'm not happy that you penetrated my security, Mr. McCabe. But I must admit, I was impressed. I've also been impressed with your own results from your own tetrahedron research. Therefore, I've been authorized to hand down Starfleet's punishment for your actions, McCabe. Admiral, I must protest. The lieutenant was only working under my orders. Relax, Captain. I'm joking. Well, half joking, anyway. Starfleet wants him reassigned to the research facility. I shouldn't lose my tactical officer over this, Commander. Perhaps I can propose a compromise. Lieutenant McCabe appears to have done his best work alongside his fellow shipmates. Maybe we should assign him to the facility on detached duty aboard the Excelsior and let him continue his investigation there. It seems we've struck a bargain then. Dismissed. Elizabeth, a word please. Officially, I will have to make a notation about the security breach on your record. I understand, Admiral. Unofficially, I command you. Starfleet command working like this under my nose. Thank you for forcing their hand. I Admiral. Lieutenant Rowe? Lieutenant Rowe? Rowe Nevin? Can I help you, Miss... Avis. Tara Avis. Ah, you're the reporter. Federation News Service. Yes. I've gotten permission from your Commodore Knapp to interview you about Glenn Batross's escape. Interview me? Uh, I'm sorry. You made quite a statement about peace and trust between Bajor and Cardassia when Batross was brought to trial. Were those just words? Okay, fine. Where do you want to do this? I thought maybe over a cup of rack to Gino.
It appears our plans with Lieutenant Rowe have been disrupted. Well, there is something I've been wanting to show you. Come with me. Access to this part of the station is restricted, Andrew. Repairs to damage from the Tholing attack have not yet been completed. I know. But the security officer on this deck owes me a favor. Isn't this view amazing? If you stand here, it feels like you're floating in space. It's amazing to see these ships so close with my own eyes, instead of through a view screen. Humans appear to draw great emotional value from such an experience. How can you not be impressed? A view screen would be more efficient. Magnification would give you still more detailed views and your experience would benefit from a dispassionate view, unclouded by emotion. Even a rational Vulcan has to admit that empirical observation could reveal things that a machine might miss. Like what? Like this. Andrew, do you know what you are doing? A year ago when you started using my first name, Right after I killed that Tholian. When I thought that I was no longer fit to wear this uniform. I wouldn't have made it through all that without you. You mean a lot to me, Satal. You said earlier you'd been studying humor. Well, I've been studying how Vulcans express themselves too. studied additional forms of human expression as well. Yeah. Come in. Commander Neros. I need to speak to you alone, sir. In that case, I'll make myself scarce, sir. I understand you're uncomfortable about people knowing about your joining with Dow. We had an agreement, sir. And I also know that Dow spent several lives as a researcher. You've been checking up on me. More like checking up on the research facility where Dow worked. Your name stood out. Five lives at the Institute for Hyperdimensional Research. That is a significant amount of time. That's the nature of hyperdimensional studies. It can take hundreds of years to conduct a single experiment. What you may not know is that Starfleet has established a link between the gray, the tetrahedrons, and hyperdimensional physics. What Starfleet doesn't have is the expertise to go much further, and we need to progress to keep the Tholians from exploiting the tetrahedrons. And how do I fit in? Dow is considered by the Institute to be one of the most brilliant researchers in the field, despite his exile and uh, presumed death. You're recruiting me? Sir, you realize this endangers my Zen standing on Trill. I'm illegally joined. I won't lie to you, Ensign. There is that risk. But the stakes are quite literally 
galactic in scale. And my work at the facility, I assume that would require me to keep things from Corey, Lieutenant Astor. Of course. Why ask, Commander? Why not simply reassign me? I'm only a lowly ensign. I prefer a volunteer, sir. Are you okay, Sir Paul? I believe I am in good health. Of course. I mean... You're not putting me on right now, are you? Constructing another joke? No. That was kind of funny though, wasn't it? Listen, Satal. I know you may feel awkward after last night. I do not feel one way or another, Andrew. Right. It's just, normally it's so easy for us to talk. I have concluded that things are no longer normal between us. Hey, look. It's never. So, what did you think of the interview? Do you make all your subjects look so good? Only the interesting ones. I definitely think you fit into that category, Nevin. I thought journalists were supposed to maintain their objectivity. I objectively found you an interesting interview subject. And now that the interview's over? The camera is off. And I can be more... subjective. So I take it you wouldn't mind uh, me asking you out again? I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Why do we care about those two hormone reactors? One of Sirach's associates is quite interested in Mr. Rowe's affairs, especially female Bajoran reporters. I appreciate the tour, number one. Captain. I know these past few months have been strained because of this. Trust between a captain and her first officer needs to be absolute, Commander. Our lives are too often in one another's hands. Secrets take the toll in any relationship, sir. I had hoped you understood that my motives were the right ones. I haven't questioned your motives for some time, Mr. Naros. But secrets are secrets. And having secrets kept from me by you, by Necheyev, by Martinez, it's put me and my crew, our crew, in danger more than once. That's why I did what I did. Despite the black mark on your record? I'm proud of that particular black mark, number one. So how much are you allowed to tell me about what you've discovered about the tetrahedrons? We have a working theory based on data from the Baku tetrahedron. We're still in the middle of some large-scale computer simulations, Captain. But we believe the tetrahedrons are huge power transformers. They appear to be broadcasting energy back to the Gray's failing star deep in the patch. Frankly, I'm worried that we're falling behind the Tholians at exploiting the tetrahedrons. We are at war and we're out of time. I believe I can help with that. Reporting for duty, sir. I appreciate your volunteering for this assignment. I'm not volunteering, Commander. I'm reporting to my new assignment and accepting a promotion in keeping with my new duties. I see the Dow skills of the top negotiator survived his joining. I see you reviewed the findings I sent you. The Tholians appear to be interested in the Tetrahedron's power generating and broadcasting capabilities. What's not clear is what's keeping the Tholians from making use of their functional Tetrahedron. How do we know they haven't? They do have keys to the Tetrahedrons. 
Only two. I believe they need more than two keys used in tandem to operate the tetrahedrons. As far as we know, only the Grey might have more. The Tholians need to steal more. Hence their raids throughout the patch. Maybe. But Surak is up to something else. He's manipulating everybody, including the Tholians. So, why hasn't someone as wonderful as you found someone yet? There can't be that many crazy people on the station, can there? Well, uh, nothing's ever worked out here. Maybe I just didn't know what I wanted. Maybe you need some incentive to work harder. Zenda Aster? Corey here. Hi, Jorian. I just wanted to let you know that I'll be late to dinner. My new assignment is a bit challenging. No problem. I'll see you at home. Promenade. I've been assigned here for at least a few months. They could be good months, Nevin. would never get here. Our new colleague is waiting for us on the bridge. At last we meet the truss. Welcome aboard. I trust you bring the information Lord Sirak seeks. And some news about your favorite Bajoran as well. Excellent. Well, don't just stand there with your mouth agape, Orion. You're the only one of us who knows Lord Sirach's location. Lay in a course. Three, three, one. Mark two, eight. Whatever your theory on Sirach, Mr. Narrows, the fact remains that we face the possibility of a true front war. The Tholians on one side and the Grey on the other. I don't relish the thought of fighting either one independently, much less both of them at the same time. Perhaps we need to prioritize, Captain. Tell me more, Mr. Zen. The Tholians appear to have stepped up their encroachment inside the patch, and the Grey appear to be in a defensive mode, trying to deny everyone access to the Tetrahedrons. What are you saying? I'm saying that Sirach and the Tholians present the more immediate threat. We and the Grey share a vested interest in keeping them at bay. The enemy of my enemy is my friend? You're suggesting an alliance with the Grey. The same Grey that have been hounding us for five years. Permission to speak freely, Captain? All right. I'm suggesting that things change, Captain. And that we should change with them. I am incapable of such an exhibition. You know what I mean. Do you regret what happened between us? I'm willing to forget this ever happened. If that's what you want. Our friendship is more important to me. Regret is a human emotion, Andrew. I'm surprised you would back away so easily from pursuing a deeper relationship. 
I know what kind of study you had to undertake to learn about Vulcan intimacy. Apart from the emotion you attached to the experience, I still sensed within you the logic of it. Sadal, I had no idea. I believe we pursued a logical course of action, Andrew, even though I do not fully understand its implications. What you perceive as my discomfort comes from my need to adjust to what a relationship with a human would entail. That may take some time. Fortunately, Ambassador Sarek's writings address this issue. I assure you, I will study them. So this is the start of something good. <laughs>